Hi and welcome to Sounds Heavenly. Today we're going to try and answer the question, can you effectively use smaller speakers like Bang & Olufsen's superb BLAB 3s in a larger room and still get good results? So, first of all a big thank you to James at soundaffair.com I was chatting to him the other week and mentioned I'd not had a proper listen to be lab three speakers at home. And uh, next thing I know, these beautiful red speakers arrived by courier. So I've got these for a few days to try out. If you've not already done so, please subscribe to the channel and click on the bell notifications because in the next few days, we're going to be demoing these speakers live on YouTube for you and actually giving you the chance to find out how they sound and compare them to other speakers of the era and of a similar size. So that's to come soon. For today, back to the question of, can you use these speakers effectively in a larger room? Now, to determine your environment, I'm gonna suggest we'll go through a very quick quiz. Three questions, yes, sorry, three questions, um, yes or no answers. Now, first one is, have a quick measure up of your room. So we'll take this one, for example, in meters or, y or yards, I've got three meters by three meters by three meters. So three times three times three, 27 cubic meters, a very small room by anyone's standards. If your room is over 60 cubic meters, I'm gonna suggest you tick yes to the first question. You have a larger room, okay? Now, Next one, going to take a little bit of preparation, so you might want to come, do this and come back to the video. I'm going to suggest that you download a free iPod, iPhone or Android app for a sound pressure level meter. So I've got one here on my iPhone. If you're fortunate enough to have a professional sound level meter, then that can also be used. But what I'm going to ask you to do there, once, once you've downloaded a, a sound pressure level meter app, Start it running, go and have a sit in your listening room and play a few tracks that you like at a comfortable level. Place the, the app or the um, pressure level meter about one meter or one yard from your speakers and record the, the maximum level that comes up. Now, I've just done that and I got a reading of 72.7 decibels. So, what we're doing here is looking at how heavily you stress those speakers in normal use. And I'm gonna suggest for the purposes of this quiz that if you have a reading above 75 decibels, then we tick yes to the second question. You're a, a higher volume listener. So it's, it, this is arbitrary, but this is to give you a baseline. And now the final question, we're nearly there, is do you listen to bass heavy music? So for example, techno, drum and bass, um, even um, classical music with um, organ pedals, that can be very, very bass heavy. So um, again, if you do, if you particularly enjoy and favor bass, we'll take yes there. So hopefully we've got one, two or three ticks in the box. And the initial starting point I'm gonna suggest is that if you, t if you said yes to all three questions, so you listen above 75 decibels, you have a room over 60 cubic meters and you like bass heavy music, I would suggest at this point, smaller speakers like BLAB 3s, as good as they are, maybe aren't your best choice at this stage. I'll give you the analogy of uh, driving a car. If you're gonna go onto a racetrack and trying to extract the maximum performance then you look for a high powered car if you've answered yes to all three or even two of the three questions in that little quiz then i would suggest you need high powered speakers you need speakers that have um, physically larger bass drivers to give you the, the the bass performance at a higher volume to fill a larger room space however if you answered only one yes there, or even no yeses, or possibly even two out of the three, 
we're, we're, we're good to go basically. You've got um, potentially the right listening environment to make use of small and stylish speakers like the BLAB 3s. So, to move on, how do we get the best from those speakers in your given listening room? We'll go through a few options here. We're going to look at first at speaker positioning, next at the room environment, and thirdly at some extra aspects that you might not have thought of. Now, the first thing, um, BLAB 3s are a perfect example because these use a couple of technologies that are really revolutionary, especially for their um, time of introduction, which is about 2003. The first is on top. Um, you have um, basically an acoustic lens, which um, if you can see here, we, we have the, the conventional tweeter for high pitched sounds inside an alcove firing upwards. And that reflects sound, high pitched sound upwards and out. And it fans out through a th not quite 360 degrees, basically half, half of that, a 180 degree um, range, but in a fairly flat profile. So the first thing you need to do is try to get those speakers up to a position whereby, ideally, that acoustic lens is at your ear height when you're listening. That means you're actually getting the full effect of that lens and you're hearing the higher pitched sounds. If the speakers are down here, or way up above you on ceiling brackets, you're going to be losing quite a lot of that high frequency sound. The next thing is to securely mount them. So here we have them on beautiful short um, table stands, which are great for office use um, or to mount onto wooden furniture. Um, I'd also suggest that the taller floor stands are a good option if you want to get them up to ear height when you're listening. In terms of positioning, it's quite uh, useful to, to consider a triangle, looking down on your room with yourself sat in your listening position, the two speakers at the other points of the triangle, and basically try and just get the, the three sides of that triangle roughly equal. So if you s sit about two meters from the speakers, try and get them about two meters apart. And I must admit personally, I'm, um, quite insistent on this and whenever we've moved house in the past as a family I've always insisted that our living area contains no furniture until the speakers are in place and then my good lady wife and the children have comp a complete free reign to fill the room with whatever they want as long as the speakers are in first. That's a little extreme for normal living uh, conditions but um, that gives you, if you can do that, that gives you the chance to get perfect sound. So consider a triangle and try and get the speakers about the same distance apart as they are from your ears and that's the best setup you can go for. And finally in terms of positioning the speakers I strongly suggest at this stage don't look at wall mounting or ceiling mounting your speakers straight away. The reason for that is the distance from your speaker to the wall behind and also to the corners of the room makes a huge difference on the way they perform. So if you can start, again, choose some songs that you know really, really well and particularly listen out for the deeper bass and the mid bass. So probably the tones about the pitch of my voice, um, lower guitar strings, um, bass guitar, and see how much they come into prominence. If you place the speakers, say, six inches or 15 centimeters from the wall, bring them out to a foot or 30 centimeters from the wall, even up to um, two feet or 60 centimeters from the wall. And in many rooms, you'll find a huge difference in the way they perform. So that's worth maybe 30 minutes, 60 minutes of your time. And you'll find that you actually, you can, by following these few steps, you can transform the way those speakers sound and basically give them the best chance to work in your room. So, going on to a little bit more um, detail about your room environment, our second of three points, it's actually really helpful, particularly with speakers with acoustic lenses like the BLAB 3s, to declutter the space between the speakers. So, that space between the two speakers wants to be as clear as possible. If you've got a television between the two, try and get the speakers forward of the TV. If you've got 
furniture, ornaments and other items there, try and get them either below the level of the acoustic lenses or back behind them. You'll find that there'll be less reflections of the higher pitched treble sounds when that space between the speakers is clear. And obviously if necessary, um, if you're able to move and adjust furniture and fittings in the room to give you that space, it is well worth the trouble and a little bit of careful listening will no doubt show that there are definite changes in most rooms. And the next thing, um, I'd suggest doing this when no one else is in the house because they'll think you're crazy. Clap your hands in the room and have a listen. So here it's a nice quiet room. You probably see from the panels on the back we've got acoustic foam on the walls, on the ceiling. Uh, we've got a very padded carpet that you can't see here but basically everything done possible to try and dampen the sound and reverberations in the room. In most rooms the best way of achieving that same goal is with um, conventional furnishings, sofas, chairs, soft furnishings, deep carpets, thick curtains, tapestries if you uh, have the, the opportunity to use them. Anything like that added to the room helps to make it a, a less echoey, reverberant, less live sounding sort of space. Um, and so basically somewhere that will be more comfortable to listen to your music in without unwanted echoes. And finally, a few things that you may not have thought of. Now the first one is, um, you may have heard the saying, rubbish in, rubbish out. If you've not got good quality music at source, that be that records, tapes, CDs or digital streaming, then you won't get good quality music out. So if you listen to records, give them a clean once in a while. You've probably got a local record shop that will have a record cleaning machine they're often available free or, or almost free of charge for customers. So keep your records clean, keep your CDs clean, and check the um, bit rate and the quality of your downloaded and streaming music. It doesn't have to be a sort of thousand kilobits per second, but make sure that you're not getting particularly low quality MP3s that are then harming the sound you, you're eventually hearing. Try and get decent quality streams or decent quality downloads. Now, if your house is anything like mine, um, it's a, quite a noisy place at times. Um, I've got two children, as much as I love them, they are probably not uh, generally conducive to enjoying my music. So what I would tend to do is sit down when the distractions are not there, when the children are asleep and I can really focus on the music. So. If you have machinery, air conditioning, um, aquarium pumps, um, all sorts of background things that make a noise, children who uh, want your attention, then I suggest try to um, steal listening times to, to when those uh, noises are, are not so invasive. Um, you may find that you can turn off machinery, you can quieten down the time. If you're in a city centre, you may find there are evening or nighttime periods when there's less background noise and that really does make a difference to the enjoyment you can get from your music. And the last one is one that um, I suppose uh, as a sound engineer um, I've been doing this for years but I'm surprised how often this gets ignored and that is keep your ears clean. Um, these are one of the best tools that you have for enjoying your music and they're often neglected. So um, it, I'd certainly suggest take medical advice if needs be and ensure that your, your ears are performing to their best. And then just finally to link to that, going back to the first point about the sound pressure level meter, it's worthwhile probably every six months, every year or so, do that same test. Listen to music that you love at a, a volume that sounds comfortable. And if you find that the listening levels that you're using are increasing. So for example, if I've got 72.7 decibels on my um, screen from today, if I find that coming back in six months time, I'm at 78 decibels, then something has happened to either to my hearing or my perception of the music. So you will ex should expect that there will be some hearing degradation as, 
as you go through your life, but it shouldn't be sudden or um, extreme. So if you find that you do change your volume levels for music um, in a short space of time, I'd advise get some medical assistance and double check that these essential tools are working properly. So I hope that's been helpful. Again, big thank you to James at Sound Affair. We're going to be properly demoing these speakers in the next few days. So please stay tuned and uh, we'll give you the opportunity to actually hear how they sound in person. Please subscribe if you've not already done so.